Hello, my wonderful human beings. Um, if you were in class, then you already have the orange paper. If you were not in class, then you have um, the document in Teams. So it's the compare and contrast. This is a Venn diagram. We're going to be looking at the hierarchies of ancient China versus India that we already know about. Um, after we have added our three to five facts into the Venn diagram with at least one similarity and one difference on the social hierarchies of China and India, we are then going to describe a similarity and a difference um, in writing. Okay, so let's actually uh, go back and learn the differences and similarities. So like I said, our objective is I can compare the social hierarchy of China to India by completing a Venn diagram and writing a paragraph. Um, we're going to skip that. So just gentle, loving reminder in India, they had the caste system for their social hierarchy and still do. Um, do you mind? Thank you. At the top of the caste were the Brahmins or the Brahmins. That's um, priest. Edu priests, educators, intellectuals are the very top of the top. And then the, the Kshatriyas, um, these were the kings and the rulers and the warrior class. Then we have the Vaisyas, who were the merchants, the craftsmen, the landowners, and the skilled workers. And then at the bottom of their social pyramid, they have the Sudra. These are the farmers, the unskilled laborers, the servants. And remember, back in India, they had the caste or the um, the untouchables was not legally technically part of the caste system. However, it was kind of like the part that no one talked about. Um, so these were the people who were the street sweepers, the people who would clean up, clean up after human and animal waste, people who would deal with the dead. These are literally out of the caste. Do you get outcast? Do you get that connection? Because it's the caste system. Yeah. Huh? 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 Hey, making connections. However, in China, the positions within the hierarchy were assigned to people from birth based on their parents' position. Now, remember in India, they were, um, people's positions were assigned at birth based on their past life. <gasps> hey, look, there's a similarity that you can write down that a position was, social position was assigned at birth. But wait a minute, is that a similarity or is it a difference? You're right, it is a difference because in India, the birth was based on a person's past life versus in China, the birth was the birth um, where they're assigned at birth is based on their parents' position. Everyone was expected to perform the duties of their assigned class, just like in India. However, there were opportunities to move up in class based on wealth. Could they do that in India? No, so that would be a difference. So let's talk about the actual, the caste in, or not the caste, the social hierarchy in China. At the very tippy top was the emperor. He was the leader of the country and the head of the imperial family, so the royal family. He owned most of the land and the wealth. Soldiers and nobles were appointed by the emperor. So the emperor got to choose who would be noble and who would the soldiers be. The next step down is the Xi. These were nobles and scholars. They, off, they were often commanders in the army. They were well-educated and they were well-respected, but held only certain limited powers um, and only certain privileges. So wait a minute, in China, it goes emperor and then nobles and scholars, right? Let's go back to India. India, it went priests and then rulers. It was priests and scholars and then rulers and warriors, right? So those are flipped. That's a difference. Go ahead and write it down. Remember, friends, if you need more time, you can always go uh, pause the video. So the third class down from the top was the Nong. These were peasants and farmers. Their purpose was to harvest food for themselves and the whole kingdom. The Nong were well-respected and they were able to own land. 
However, they did not have access to the privileges of the she. Wait a minute. Farmers were in the middle top, like upper middle class. That's really different than it was in India, right? In India, in India, the lowest class was the farmers versus in China, they're the third class from the top. They're straight up middle class. Huh, they're way more respected in farmers are way more respected in China than they were in India. There's a difference. The next class was the gong. These were craftsmen and potters and inventors. These are people who created. They developed goods and merchandise for the higher classes, meaning the Xi and the emperor. The gong were not respected. They had limited rights and limited privileges. They were not able to own land, but they were allowed to rent. They often had a lot of money. So you can see that in this um, ancient Chinese society, hey, society, it's one of our vocabulary words. In this ancient Chinese society, it's not necessarily based on how much money someone has because the gong often had a lot of money. However, they were creating things that were nice to have. It's nice to have pots and, and things. It's nice to have jewelry but is it necessary to live? No. The class above them, the Nong, the farmers, would, is what they created, what they harvested, necessary to live? So that's why they were higher than the Gong class and the creator class. Then, towards the bottom of the social hierarchy of China, we have the Shang. This is the second from the bottom. The Shang were merchants and traders and shopkeepers and bankers. They transported and traded goods. And because of that, because they worked with money, they were very wealthy. Now, in American society, we would think, well, if they make all of the money, then, of course, they're going to be at the top of the social hierarchy but not in China. In China, they were not allowed to own land, they had no privileges, and they were not respected. Sometimes though, sometimes, rarely, but it did happen, they were able to make enough money to climb the social hierarchy. And it wasn't just because they had money, it was because they had money and were able to do something with it. So they had, earned and made enough money to be able to um, go to school. And then they were no longer merchants and traders. They were scholars. How is that different from India though? Well, yes, Casper, in India, the merchants and craftsmen and traders were in the middle class versus the Shang, the merchants and traders and bankers, were in the lower classes. Good contrast. Thank you, Casper. And then, as is so often in, the bot in social hierarchies, the bottom lowest layer is the pe people who are enslaved. Um, they were the lowest class in the hierarchy. They worked in the fields. They planted and harvested crops for their owners. So the farmers are out there working, but if their farm was big enough, then they had enslaved people working for them. Enslaved people had no rights, they were poorly fed, and they were usually never able to climb that social hierarchy. So what I need you to do now, my wonderful human beings, is I need you to finish filling out your Venn diagram Try and challenge yourself. I know the directions say uh, five to eight or something like that, but try and come up with at least three similarities because we talked about quite a few and four differences for each circle, okay? So if you're gonna say the she, um, which was the warrior class, I think. Oh, the nobles. So the she were the nobles. Um, in the Chinese society. However, in India, the 
um, Kshatriyas were the nobles, the rulers and the kings. Okay. The, in India, the Brahmins were the priests and the um, academics and the scholars. So they were the highest class versus in India, I'm sorry, versus in China, the, um, the scholars were the second class. Okay. So three, challenge yourself, three similarities, four differences on each side. I believe in you. Be good people, make good choices. If you need help, just email me. Bye.